<laughs> I'm Jeff Tate, and I'm a comedian. I'm Doug Benson, and I'm Jeff Tate's friend. So people ask me, you want to do a podcast? And, I, and what would you do it about? And I said, well, it's got to be about movies. I love movies. So then we just started doing it at a theater in Los Angeles. And this is about seven or eight years ago. And um, it's just been going and growing ever since. And it eventually got to the point where I started taking it on the road. Last year at the Travis City Film Festival, uh, we uh, did one with Michael Moore and a comedian friend of mine and a filmmaker. And it was super fun. And so we came back and did one again this year. And uh, hopefully it'll be like a staple of the festival, bringing Douglas movies. He's been a frequent guest on the, uh, on the show. And now he's, uh, he's actually started his own podcast. And it's yeah. even more, people say to me sometimes, movies, that's so specific. Like, that's just one thing, you know. <laughs> and it's like, there's plenty to talk about, I think. But he's gone even deeper and into a specificity because his podcast is called Afternoon, Everybody. And it's uh, mostly uh, just talking about how much he loves the show Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to make, I, I figured if I was going to make a podcast, I'd want to make a podcast about something I would listen to. And I wish there was a Cheers podcast. And if someone else was doing it, I wouldn't have a podcast. I forget that it's all over the world. <laughs> and it's like, I got Yeah, you're getting I a nice tweet the, from, from the UK or something? Yeah, yeah. I found the statistics part of the SoundCloud page. And uh -huh. I was like, holy 40 people in London. I, for, I just forget that, it, you know, people in Australia and Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. Like, there, it's all over the world. It's... It's completely bananas. They could be sitting somewhere. They could be sitting somewhere exotic, listening to you talk about a show that took place in a bar. Expatriates. That's what I'm trying to. Expats. Yeah. I'm trying to reel them in. <laughs> it's definitely good to get into it when you're really young because you have the energy for it, you know. And uh, I just kind of stuck with it, and then I, I, I bet you it was at least three, four years uh, into being a stand-up when I thought, oh, I can actually, I really can make this work as like what I do for a, a living. My brother and I would just watch stand-up. Uh, like we'd get home from school and short attention span theater was on and then uh, stand-up, stand-up, uh, those shows. The two Drink Minimum. Two Drink Minimum, The A-List. I saw Doug on The A-List. Yeah, a -list. I was on all of those shows. <laughs> I always liked it and didn't know that you could do it. And then and the, there was like, what, like 15 years between those two realizations where I'm watching <laughs> comedy constantly yeah a lot of the greats really uh they got in they started doing it before they were old enough to be a, a, in the clubs you know and that's a that's a good thing to do if you if you know that young that that's you know what you want to do and you're and you're uh just naturally interesting enough like hicks or Chappelle, because there i know like there are 15 to 16 year olds that show up at the club now like where i started in cincinnati there are 16 17 year olds and they got nothing to talk about but those right. guys had something to talk about, even at that age. I don't ever like sit down like, now I'm gonna write some jokes for an hour. Like I never do that, you know? I, it's just not my style. I, I've tried that probably <laughs> three dozen times in the last 12 years and I have never once gotten a joke out of it. If I have anything funny, I just, I just keep talking until it's all, the, all the goodwill is exhausted. <laughs> And yeah. then I back it down. Yeah, then you could tighten it up for yeah. the for the next audience or whatever. There's, I just tell, I tell a lot of stories because I have a terrible memory, and I, uh, at some point about four years in, I told a story and I was like, oh, I only had to remember one thing. You just had to remember, bring up that thing that happened. Yeah, and, and then, then if you just talk your way through it, yeah, feel eight you'll minutes. find punchlines punchlines along the way. But if it was something that was very specific with the setup and the punchline, and it had to be done the exact this exact way and this exact way. I always f those up. I can't. I can't do it. But stage magic. There's stage magic. I don't care for your language. Sorry. There's stage magic. Is your act this filthy? A, I've yeah. never watched it. <laughs> <laughs> it's enough of a gift that this festival exists and we get to come. But then they give you a bag full of stuff, and it's like six or seven items are all mostly food. Uh, yeah, mostly food and cherry related. Like there's a whole cherry pie in the bag, and then. Uh, but my dog, favorite dog thing, treats. my favorite thing is there's dog treats shaped like the state of Michigan with like, but they have like white icing on them, and so they look like cookie. They look look to me like cookies, even though yeah. it says dog treat right on the package. But it's small. It's small, it but it's it's bigger. on there. Dogs should be more emphasized. But we both made the same mistake. We both took a bite individually. We didn't discuss it. We didn't do it at the same time. We're separately. I took, thought just it took a bite like out cookie. of the. 
out of a dog biscuit. And then it was, it was it, I mean, it was like the it, icing was good, though. Yeah. Like, but why would a thing? dog even care about having icing on their cookie? I mean, I fell in love with film festivals in general, but this one in Traverse City specifically because just at every turn, nice, great things happen. Michael Moore appreciates how fun movies can be, and he and he, he brings fun movies here. It's not all just serious documentaries and you know and issue movies. It's uh, it, it's a lot of fun. There's no movie that's shown at this festival that was forced on the festival. Yeah, yeah. By a studio. There's no, there was no trade. There was no, well, you can have this one if you show this one too. It was all, like how Armageddon has a Criterion Collection DVD. It does? <laughs> yeah, they wanted to do, there was something else at the same time and the studio was like, you have to make, you have to do one for Armageddon too. Now I have the Armageddon one. <laughs> it's pretty great. I just, but I got scared for a second when you said you had to do one for Armageddon 2, because I thought there was a sequel I didn't oh, know no, about. No. <laughs> no, they can't do it. They, they, you can't do that again. Armageddon as well. Armageddon. Which I keep waiting for them to say in the title of a sequel. <laughs> Armageddon Part 2 should be called Armageddon as well. As well. Armageddon out of here. <laughs> oh, no. 